yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to the fourth grade. So happy to meet you. Can't wait till I see you. Gonna have a good time. We'll learn about science. Find ways to apply it. And I bet that you'll like it. Gonna have a good time. Welcome to the fourth grade. Hello, I'm your teacher. My name's Mr. Reed, and it's very nice to meet you. I'm from Chicago. I love eating pizza and I dress to impress, but I still rock sneakers. It's my first year teacher, so it's all real exciting. Got some ideas, and I really like to try them. Like making songs to remember what you hear. We'll be learning so much by the end of the year. To my friends and my peers, the parents. And the students, I'm ready, you're ready, we're ready, let's do this. Yeah, but absolutely no daydreaming, working hard till the bell starts ringing. Welcome to the fourth grade. Connection, engagement, rigor, success. Hello, and welcome to my podcast, coaching you through all things education. And you can find me right here on Tuesdays at noon. I'm your host, Anne Labangana Clay of ANC Unlimited, and we take the stress out of education. I am a passionate educator who has spent the past 26 years teaching, presenting, coaching, and consulting for students of all ages, parents, other educators, and the public. Each week, we will unpack relevant topics in education together. And when I'm not podcasting, stop by our website, acunlimited.org, for our new blog post in Coaching U EDU, or a free consultation on any teacher, admin, or parent question of your choosing. We also provide three levels of interview coaching and custom design workshops made just for you. If something resonates with you during this episode, please leave a comment on LinkedIn, on our company Facebook page, or on Twitter. Check out the story notes for our social media details. And if you have an episode suggestion, please send it to coachingallthingsedu at gmail.com. Now let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. This is part three of our mental health and wellness series. I am over the moon with today's guest. I have been a fan since the video premiered on YouTube and all of the morning shows in the year 2016. Our intro was a big clue, I hope. Mr. Reed, as he is affectionately known, became an instant celebrity to students educators, and the general public with his engaging video, Welcome to the Fourth Grade. He has produced other songs since, such as The Morning Song and My Teacher Loves Me. In addition to being an educator, a musician, and a premier speaker, Mr. Dwayne Reed wears many hats, and we're honored to have him weigh in on our mental health and wellness series. Welcome, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Thank you for the welcome. I'm so excited to be here, and and, um, I'm eager to speak about mental health um, from an educator standpoint, and thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, we'll dive right into question number one. Can you tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself and why you are so passionate about mental health and wellness? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Dwayne from Chicago. Um, I teach fourth and fifth grade in the Chicago public school system. Um, I, I'm really passionate about um, seeing kids excel in life, uh, particularly black and brown kids. Um, I think that I have been blessed with the opportunity to be in their lives and the lives of um, their parents and caregivers. And I take that responsibility um, to heart. Um, I'm really really, really passionate. I'm a passionate person. So if I'm in it, I'm in it. And my kids know it and their families know it. Um, and then I think another thing that a lot of people can probably pick up on about me, but may not know clearly, um, as I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. And I think that my faith really, I know that my faith dictates um, how I get down in the classroom, how I get down with my scholars, how I get down with my work. I feel like I'm called to excellence. So that's what I try to create every single day of my life with with my work. So that's a, that's a little bit about me. Yes, indeed. Wow. <laughs> I think that passion, I heard in your voice how your voice changed when you use the word passion. Um, you know, and just on Twitter and, and everywhere, you know, we as the public have just really enjoyed watching, you know, how you have made it clear that, you know, kids are first, you know, you are mm -hmm. passionate about that. I know that, um, you know, humans for, you know, everything is about the human side and then we work on, you know, those skills. But I think the other piece for me that I, and that's why that video was so key is it is about that tier one instruction too you know you're giving your best you know at all times and i absolutely love it so thank you so much for sharing that mm -hmm. all right question number two the year 2020 was filled with coronavirus the racial unrest the lack of human interaction, et cetera. And it has impacted our mental health and our wellness, whether it looks like fear and anxiety, agitation and irritability, or just feeling unmotivated and unproductive. What do you think are the roots of how we might be feeling and how can we deal with it? I think the roots of how we're we're feeling stem from an unfamiliarity with this. Mm. No, no one, well, not no one, but ninety nine percent of the people who are living now have never experienced a global pandemic. Right. Mm. So I think because we have this unfamiliarity with the world that we live in there's this fear of, I don't know what's going to come tomorrow. Yeah. And as a result, we have this heightened sense of anxiety. We have this heightened sense of uh, the, the potential loss. It, it almost elevates this fight or flight um, mechanism within us. And it's like, survival that's all it is survival mode and human beings aren't created they weren't made to constantly be in survival mode so i think that that is the reason why there's this angst and anxiety and um all these fears and irritability and um lack of productivity i think this all stems from the, the fear of the unknown. I don't know when this is all going to be over. I don't know if I'm going to catch the coronavirus. I don't know if my my peers or my family or my friends are going to catch it and die. And so you've got a worldwide pandemic that is 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 weighing on people who've never experienced that. And then couple that for a number of people, particularly people of color, couple that with the way that we've been being treated across the world, particularly in the United States, for hundreds of years, it's like thing after thing after thing after thing, you know what I mean? And it's it's tough to live in survival mode every single day of your life. Mm, mm, mm. That's the truth, right? I mean, I don't want to <laughs> take away from what you're saying, but 
you know, that's a, that's exactly it. Being in survival mode, like that's what um, you're constantly, constantly trying to, um, you know, prepare yourself, and you can't, right? You know, mm -hmm. what's next? You don't know what's coming next. Wow, and the fear that comes from that. That's an excellent point. Excellent point that you brought up. All right. So, um, my question for you next is what have you been doing personally to work on your own mental health? So, personally, to work on my own mental health, I've um, really gotten a lot of strength from my faith right when, when there's this fear of the unknown to place your faith in something that you believe has it all worked out or someone you believe has it all worked out yes. puts you at ease um so that puts me at ease um, and that alleviates a lot of the fear um or anxiety that i have so that's number one my faith has been huge in grounding me right because I'm the type of person that's a high flyer in any and everything. So I can be all over the place in one second and then the next second, another place. But I think my faith in God yeah. grounds me and keeps me stable, keeps me level headed so then I can make reasonable decisions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can be uh, propelled or compelled, excuse me, to, OK, let me get out of bed and do my work. Um, let me actually have this conversation that I've been planning for weeks and I've been putting off. Um, so faith is number one. And I think um, some other basics are just maintaining this, um, this, this, this little bit of hope. Like, I feel like we all have to maintain hope um, and just holding out just until a little bit longer. I might not I might not make it through the way I want to make it through, but as long as I make it through, I've made it through. And yeah. I think holding on to hope yeah. can allow us to fight every single day. And that's something that I do. I hold on to hope. Okay, things ain't going to go back to normal. I don't want them to go back to normal, but things might go back to, you know, uh, where I can interact with family and friends right. and we don't have to be distanced from each other. And um, yeah. I can actually have those interpersonal relationships now. Yes. So I'm, I'm I'm holding on to hope that we'll get back to a place similar to that. So that's that's where I've been. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely faith. Um, like you said, it counteracts the fear that you spoke about, you know, in question number two, which a lot mm -hmm. of people have experienced. Um, and then hope. Right. I mean, in my mind, they're very similar. Right. Faith and hope. But I think that you made an excellent point. We might not go back to the way it was, right? Yeah. We might not, you know, the new normal, you know, is 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 difficult. But if we ho keep hope uh, within us that we will be, ha like you said, have those interactions with family and friends, uh, you know, with students and things on a on a safe level, um, you know, again and soon then certainly, um, you know, that's what keeps us going. I, I enjoyed hearing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we need to remember, um, remember those things when we're, when we're kind of, you know, in that ugly place. Um, yeah. 2020 has been a little ugly, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with more from Mr. Dwayne Reed. Dear teacher, do you need strategies and resources for individualized instruction, innovative lessons, small group instruction, or student engagement? We can help you with this and more. We have 26 years of teaching and consulting experience in pre-K through 12th grades, as well as experience in adult professional development. We design and present custom-made, self-paced online webinars and in-person workshops for teachers and parents as well. We also provide lesson plan support, interview coaching, proven scholarship tips, and tutor referrals. And that's why ANC Unlimited is just that, 
Unlimited. We offer quality work in everything we do, or we don't do it. So contact us today to help you take the stress out of education by visiting our website at acunlimited.org, or you can reach us via email at a and c dot unlimited the number four y o u at gmail dot com. We look forward to connecting with you soon. We're back with more from Mr. Dwayne Reed. Question number four. As an educator, you have an awesome responsibility of being charged with the mental health and wellness of your school population virtually and now with the possibility of that happening in person. What have been some challenges? And please share some of your successes. Yeah, I think challenges um, with the reality that as an educator, there are a lot of people who are counting on me, right? Um, Even mentally, I think uh, an immediate challenge is removing this notion that I'm the savior. Um, it's, It's removing that notion from my own mind and then communicating that to people who might think otherwise. No, don't get it twisted. I ain't here to save you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to serve you, but I'm not here to save you. I cannot be your all. I cannot be the, you know, what you place your hope in because I'm faulty and I'm going to fail you. I I can dag near, I can't even do it for myself. So, you know, what I look like trying to do it for X amount of scholars and their families and, and other teachers. So again, I can serve you in that capacity. I can help, I can support, but I can't save you. So I think making that clear to myself, number one, and then making that clear to the people um, whom I maintain a relationship with. Um, I think the next challenge that comes up is everybody is on different levels. So some people uh, are, are are dealing with 2020 um, a little bit more easier than other people are. Some people it's, and, and that's all right, by the way. So I, I, I don't mean to say, well, everybody needs to be on the same wavelength. Heck no. Heck no, because everybody's not going through the exact same thing the exact same way. Um, but that can be a challenge if, you know, I'm at one place and you're at another and we're trying to see eye to eye on how to move forward. Um, so so that's been challenging as well. Um, but I think as far as the success is concerned, um, man, my, my scholars showing up every day is a success, <laughs> yeah. right? Them, yes. them, them logging in and them being there when they could be literally miles away by the click of a button, right? When they could be playing the video game. <laughs> hey, I'm fine that you if, that you logged in if you still want to play the video game. At least you logged in and you're hearing a little bit of something I got to say. Um, so that's a huge success for me um, and, and, and in my school environment. Great. Wow. You know, and, and some people would see that as a small success, but there are many a teacher across the country who can, who cannot have that same success story. They don't have that same um, success. And like you said, um, you know, they might be on their video game part of the time, you know, but they have logged in, right? They're tuned mm-hmm. in. And we know that you don't have to be eyeball to eyeball to pick up on everything. Like you said, right. you know, they could be listening at the same time, but that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's something we need to remember. That is a success. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Line. All right. Our next question for our educators, our parents, and our students who are listening today, what are three strategies to improve our own mental health and wellness? Yes. Uh, so for whomever's listening, I'm no mental health and wellness expert, but um, things that have, have been beneficial and helpful for me as far as improving my mental health and wellness have been um, exercise, getting outside. So getting outside to run. I actually hate running. I hate it. 
I hate it. However, it's been so helpful for me because of one, I get that vitamin D and we all need vitamin D. Um, two, it gives me an opportunity to just let negative feelings go. They come off of me when I'm out in the cold. They come off of me when I'm sweating. Um, so getting up and exercising and being outside. So that's that's number one. And I'd even I'd even say with with number one, like dressing up, right? I, I, I dress up. It's not just pajamas all day. It's okay. Maybe I can put a pair of jeans on or some some nice sweats. It's like that lets you know, hey, you're still a human. You're still functioning in this life. You're still advancing towards something. Put some clothes on. So that's number one. Get up and get active. Okay. Number, <laughs> number two, I say in order to benefit our mental health and our wellness, um, I think considering what you're thankful about, um, I know it's a cliche thing, but it, it's so true and it's so helpful. I, I can be inundated with all of these negative things, man. I'm sorry about this, man. I'm mad about this. I'm angered by this. I'm frustrated about this. Or I could shift the the my mindset and say, but look at all of these things that I do have. Look at all of these relationships I still maintain. Look at these people who are, you know, fighting tooth and nail to keep this relationship going strong with me. I have way more than I should even be complaining about. Um, so I think focusing on thankfulness is huge. It's huge. What do what do you have and how can you be thankful for that? Um, and then I think finally, as far as uh, health and wellness, um, I think speaking with other people is huge. Um, it, it, or even, yes, I think speaking with other people is so helpful because you don't have to just keep these things bottled up within within you, That's inside right. your own self. That's right. Yeah. You can you can have a conversation and say, "Look, man, I'm struggling today," and I use my social media to communicate that sometimes. Look, I'm stressed. I just put stressed in all caps the other day. I'm stressed, and I get to open up and let people pour into me the the, the goodness and the hope that they have to offer. And then vice versa, I get to be that support for other people who open up and, and talk. Sometimes it's just a matter of talking and then listening to other people who are speaking. So those are kind of my three <laughs> tips for all of us who are going through 2020 right now. Yes. Well, I tell you what, I, I'm taking a mental note that I need to do more outdoor experiences. <laughs> <laughs> because like you said, it in itself, it, um, you know, it's kind of a mental release, you know, you don't want to sometimes, you know, get out there, but your mind is kind of free, you know, mm -hmm. um, of distractions, as I, as I like to say. So, oh, that's wonderful. And, and your other tips, I think everybody's writing them down right now, <laughs> getting ready to, uh, you know, add them into their calendars. Because I think uh, part of this series is we want to make sure that people realize, you know, you have to sometimes be intentional about things, you know. I know that it's difficult for you after a long day, probably, you know, to get on social media and like you said, pour yourself out and, you know, and be poured back into, which is a blessing, uh, you know, but you know that it's a two-way street. And like you said, it, it, it benefits all in the end. All right. I hear that you have a book coming out in 2021. What is the title and what is it about? Yes, you hear correctly. I have a book coming out in March and it's called Simon B. Ryman. And Simon B. Ryman is about a black boy on the west side of Chicago um, who's very fearful. He's very nervous. He's very self-conscious. Um, He's afraid to use his voice. However, Simon has a particularly interesting talent um, in that he can rap really well. So whenever he's faced with a difficult challenge, he processes that challenge in his mind through rap. And throughout the course of the book, we see how as he's coming into his own, Simon uses his voice to help make change in his community. So along with Simon, who has dubbed himself the notorious DOG, roof, roof, uh, along with Simon, he's got the, the DOG crew. Um, and it's, it's, it, it really t tells about what it's like um, growing up here on the west side of Chicago 
um, and how even those who seem like they don't have a voice do have a voice and that voice can be heard. Ooh, wow. You unpacked that book beautifully. I think that I am definitely pre-ordering, <laughs> but you know, even for, you know, for me to order it, I'm, I would love to do that. I think our schools need to think about pre-ordering it as well um, to empower, you know, our youth. It all is all about student voice, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm much, 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 much older than you, <laughs> you know, when I was in school, <laughs> It was not about student voice at all, you know? And so I think that through the years, we've gotten closer to that. But I love how your book, um, you know, speaks about that everyone has a voice, even if you don't hear it, right? Even if you don't hear it all the time. Oh, great. So hopefully we'll um, be able to get some information in our story notes for how to, or for maybe your website, for how people can uh, obtain the book when you do your pre-orders. Yes, yes, yes. All right, awesome. And this question is trending on the show. It is our final question, one of my favorite. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what legacy message would you print on it and why? If I could have a billboard with anything printed on it, the legacy message that I would print on it would be this. Get over yourself. Ah. <laughs> Get over yourself. Number one, I know in media, shock value is really important. So if something says, get over yourself, I'm like, whoa, 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 who are you telling to get over us? So that's number one. Now I've gotten your attention. Nice. Get over yourself in that so many people think that the world is about them. Mm. And it's and it's not. The world is not about you as an individual. The, the world is about all of us together. Um, and again, even if I take from from my faith, I think about Jesus. And it's like if there was anybody that the world was going to be about, it was going to be Jesus. Yet in him coming to earth, he puts himself last. He puts others first. He gets over himself, so to speak. And I think that if more of us got over ourselves and put ourselves second or last and put others first, our world would be such a better place. So if there's if there's anything that I'd want to leave a legacy of, it's man, you 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 come second, you come third, you come last, mm -hmm. everybody else in your life comes first. And if everybody is putting everybody else first, we all gonna be first. Get over yourself. Uh, wow. <laughs> that was an impactful legacy message. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed, for joining us today. I tell you, uh, just absolutely loved hearing about your world and how you feel about it and the tips that you gave us. Um, you know, we'll definitely be able to put those things right into action today. So, until next time on Twitter, <laughs> or maybe as a future guest, Mr. Dwayne Reed, you have an awesome rest of the day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Bye. Well, that concludes another episode of Coaching You Through All Things Education podcast. As Confucius states, those who develop the ability to continuously acquire new and better forms of knowledge that they can apply to their work and to their lives will be the movers and shakers in our society for the indefinite future. Again, you can find me on LinkedIn or on our company Facebook page, A and C Unlimited. And please take a moment to visit our website at acunlimited.org for that free consultation. Until next time, stay stress-free and be well. Hello. This is Anne Labangana Clay 
your podcast host for coaching you through all things education, as well as the founder of ANC Unlimited. I absolutely love using Anchor as my home. Let me tell you why. First of all, the creation tools allow me to record and edit my podcast right from my phone or my computer. Second of all, Anchor will distribute my podcast for me so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and of course now iHeartRadio. The third reason why Anchor is my home is because there is no cost to me when I create so I can create as many episodes and bonus episodes as I choose for my listeners. So my suggestion is that you sign up today at Anchor FM and start your own podcast. I'll see you Tuesday. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.